All right, once again, guess what I did? Yes, watched another Hammer Horror movie. Uh, this time, The Mummy. So, uh, let's see. That's uh, three of the universe <laughs> characters, which aren't really their characters. I mean, The Mummy. I'm not sure uh, if... Well, I mean, what, what, let's see. I think an Edgar Allan Poe story. But there wasn't much there as like there is for Frankenstein and Dracula. Uh, you know, the novels they were based on. So... Uh, the mummy uh, might have been more of an original character, more or less, but once again, uh, uh, is helped greatly by being, yes, a period piece set in that time in those early uh, 20th century days or late 1800s uh, uh, or 19th century, um, where the uh, e exploitation of, of relics, most notably Egyptian relics and mummies and all that stuff, was going on quite a bit. And eventually you get into the famous discovery of King Tut's tomb with Howard Carter and all that. And then all the stories about, oh, there was a curse and a bunch of people died and all that. And uh, it just fills in perfect material for yet another horror narrative. And uh, that's what you get with uh, The Mummy. Now, uh, one of the things that I think hurt the recent attempt at The Mummy with Tom Cruise <laughs> was, um, well, it was very repetitious of what the Brendan Fraser movie had done. But the Brendan Fraser movie had done everything right, and especially since they wanted to push the Universal characters into action to compete with Marvel and stuff like that. Uh, Brendan Fraser's Mummy was pretty much that. They probably should have just said it's set in that universe <laughs> and done it like that. Uh, but uh, Tom Cruise's story was set in modern times and all that, and I uh, borrowed from that first movie, and, but it just was not going to uh, work, and that's a whole other story. But I think uh, again, these uh, characters work best set in these times that both Universal and Hammer did, and it, it works out. Now, Hammer, they take their own uh, uh, liberties and ideas to it, so they're not completely ripping off those movies. Uh, and so, uh, it, well, and, it, and it's unfair to, to suggest that they were ripping those off. They're, you know, the, the popularity of the characters and the interests. Yeah, I guess, but then it, they're up for grabs anyway, so, you know, it's their own take on it. So, uh, the Boris Karloff, again, Boris Karloff <laughs> was the mummy, and it was all very creepy and cool, and there's similarities here about uh, there's a character who goes insane once he sees the mummy actually come to life and all that. And But we never really got to see the mummy as a mummy. We saw him in his, his uh, sarcophagus, and uh, that's it, and we briefly see some movement and my guess is, is that the makeup job they did for Karloff in that uh, scene was not meant for him to move. <laughs> and, uh, and maybe they even went after and touched it up a little on, on the swim cell. I don't know. But uh, uh, th th so that's that. And then he, he becomes, and then of course the whole idea is that he was the mummy of an Egyptian sorcerer of sorts or a priest or whatever and had all these powers and that's what the Brendan Fraser movie uh, takes from as well and so they use the name Imhotep uh, which is based on a real person who lived uh, who uh, was one of the original architects that led to the pyramids uh, and so he, his, uh, in, his architectural genius was revered so much that he was seen as probably godlike or a demigod of sorts I had, there was something supernatural going on for someone to be that smart. Uh, and so it stood to reason that that would be a cool name to use. Uh, Hammer uh, went with their own name of Caris uh, uh, or Caris, <laughs> if you wish. Uh, and there you go. However, uh, it's more closer to what the Universal Story did in a way. What I do like is that the mummy is presented as a monster, and that's what he is. Uh, and I think some people might think, well, there's too many similarities with Frankenstein or something like that. Well, that's true, uh, but still, it, it, it's, it's cool to see him in the bandages and everything. <laughs> and so that was a, 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 a good idea on their part. Had they done it where he, you know, he comes back to life and then he looks like an ordinary guy, but he's up to sinister, sinister motives and all this sort of stuff. Um, then it would have been too much of just a redo of Universal. This way you get the theatrics of actual uh, monstrous looking, creepy looking creature and all that. And plus the guy using him, uh, who's, a, who's apparently a descendant of the cult uh, of Karnak. <laughs> uh, and he fits the role 
of the the villainous guy who has uh, motives and whatnot now he's a true believer in this cult he sees that uh, as insulting as to what these uh, british ar uh, uh, archaeologists did and they he felt that they defiled the tomb and boy do they uh, they blow it up after they find it and everything <laughs> so it's a bit of a commentary on that because even at the time people were like look we're really uh, we're just stealing uh, another culture stuff and all that and then taking it to the british museum and stuff. On the one hand, he said, yeah, but this is how we learn, and this is uh, our collective human uh, history and whatnot. That's true, but you didn't need to steal their stuff. <laughs> it seems like you can still learn uh, from it uh, without that. And uh, Well, it took a while before we realized the understanding of that, so that most things that are discovered in Egypt today remain in Egypt. So uh, what happened in Egypt stays in Egypt, uh, at least now. So uh, that's why it gets increasingly kind of stupid to try to set mummy stories into the future. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you could, like you said, oh, there's some lost tomb and it happens right then and there, rather than this whole thing that there's this ongoing uh, industry. Uh, I'm sure there's certainly relics get stolen and sold and black market and that sort of thing happens, but not quite at the level it did uh, back uh, in the uh, you know late uh, 19th century and early 20th century is all that kind of activity. So. That's a better time period to put it in. So uh, that's what you got here. Um, uh, of course, Peter Cushing is the... And now he's a good guy. <laughs> and uh, he's a target for this creature because he was part of the crew that defiled the tomb of his great love, uh, a Princess. And we do get the backstory uh, in that. And uh, we see all that stuff uh, play out. And uh, in a lot of similarities. And then uh, in the original... Mummy, he's still in love with the princess, and she's reincarnated in this other woman, and so he seeks her out and wants to uh, put his uh, beloved soul into her body, and they can live forever and all this sort of stuff. So it's uh, this uh, a terrible haunted romance that uh, can't happen because in order for it to happen, so many evils must take place. So you can understand the heartbreak, and, and, the, and the, there's some sympathies with the character, but you know he can't do it that way here. Those elements are still there, where apparently uh, she has at least been reincarnated or has a distant descendant who is now the wife of Peter Cushing's character. <laughs> and thank God, because uh, the mummy was about to kill him, and then she screams out, and he sees her, and she looks like his his old, old beloved. And uh, this brings him out from under the spell of the, uh, the, the cultist guy who has him under control, and uh, you know, all he wants is to be with his beloved. And so there is the sympathetic nature uh, to him uh, in, in that poor, uh, pathetic state that he's in. And uh, sadly, he can't speak because they cut his tongue out as part of his punishment. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it's all pretty brutal uh, in the whole setup there. So, so there's elements of it like that that are similar but plays out differently. So you're not bored. <laughs> Wait a minute. I've seen this already. Well, not like this yet. So... Uh, all around good. Once again, uh, simplicity, uh, studio shots, uh, a house is used mostly. Uh, a little bit more uh, extra scenes and whatnot in the sense that you have the tomb and then you have the, the story of, uh, of, of how the mummy became the mummy and all that stuff. Uh, so a little bit more than the other two of Dracula and uh, Frankenstein, but, uh, uh, but, but keeping it uh, limited and uh, simple because the, the story uh, evokes... Uh, on its own through its characters and uh, uh, atmospherics and all of that. So another well done for Hammer. You can, I can see why it was a successful run. Uh, they're producing uh, these pretty good little horror films of these characters that people wanted to see more of. And uh, so there's the mummy who actually stays the mummy, <laughs> which gives him an extra creepiness to him. Uh, and uh, yes, they did do more. And well, wow, the way it is, it's, it's not exactly certain that he's dead. I mean, they their plot was uh, to get him into the swamp, and he sinks into it, and they shoot him up a lot. But he'd been shot so many times up to that point, uh, bullets will not kill him. It tears up his bandages. Hey, he's got to he got to mend that up again. Boy, he's got to be mad. <laughs> uh, but so uh, this is the only one I believe I've seen, and so I don't know. If I have time, I'll look into those. Uh, I don't know what they do to get him back. I did make a mistake about Frankenstein because I said I thought that they didn't even address how he comes back in the sequel because the sequel I never saw. 
but uh, looking it up, thinking, well, I mean, if I have time, I'll do that one too for a review. And, uh, well, the plot leaks out as to what happened. And so they do give an explanation. Uh, so if I can get to it, we'll cover that then. Uh, in the meantime, a uh, little channel update. I've got another hurricane on its way. And so it uh, might not be any Nelson ratings content or Nelson show for a while as that goes through. I'm going to try to see if I can put some stuff out and schedule it uh, going forward. Uh, this storm doesn't look like it might not be as bad as Laura was as we, uh, Hurricane Delta, but still could be out of power for a while at the very least. So there you go. How about that? Yeah, yeah just the time for how, well, it's 2020, you know, that's, <laughs> uh, I hate to mention it, but we may have an asteroid on the way too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it's just, of course, of course. So, uh, the mummy seems kind of kind of bland now <laughs> compared to this year. <laughs> but still, uh, yeah, I do recommend it. It's a, a fun classic uh, horror film from, from the Hammer Universe. All right. Thank you for watching and listening. So why not like and subscribe and check out that link description below. That'll take you to my mini stores and have plenty of goodies for you. You know, hats, mugs, stickers, posters, all that goody, goody stuff. Plus, you can head over to IndiePlanet.com and pick up a copy of my comic book, Night Night. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Plus, you can also catch my podcast, Mr. Nelson Show, over at RadioMisfits.com. And you can also watch my videos on my channel at BitChute. That's the Mr. Nelson channel on BitChute.